Dolphins are amazing. They've been reported to have self-awareness. They have incredible problem-solving skills and they echolocate. There's very little known about the dolphin brain because the specimens are pretty rare. The dolphin brains that we used in this study were acquired what we say opportunistically, meaning that the dolphins stranded on a beach, and in this case, both the dolphins that we study stranded in North Carolina over a decade ago, and they, they basically washed up dead, and there's a very large stranding network in the United States, so when these events happen, volunteers mobilize to go to the beach and if, if the animals are still alive, they try to save them. And if not, then, then parts of the animal are used for scientific research. And, and that's how we came by these specimens. We used a, a relatively new technique in brain imaging that's been used in humans for several years. It's called diffusion tensor imaging. And the way it works is that we take the specimens, a brain in this case, and we put it in an MRI machine and track the way water molecules move. So, so this image is the first picture that we've seen of the entire dolphin brain and all the connections inside of it. So the computer simulation is actually a reconstruction of the fiber pathways in the dolphin's brain. And so we use the information that we obtained from the MRI to reconstruct the white matter pathways. And the way to think about white matter is that these are the hardwired connections between different parts of the brain. So what we found is that there are probably multiple areas in the dolphin brain associated with auditory information. And by tracing out the connections from where the information enters the brainstem, we were able to identify what parts of their cortex or the big part of the brain this information is going to. And we think that some bits of this information are for hearing and other parts are for echolocation. So these parts are probably closer to the vision parts of their brains and is somewhat analogous to how bats use the same kind of information. So this is quite surprising because dolphins and bats are completely unrelated. There's a couple of cool things about this research. The first is that we're using a technique that has only been used in humans and primates to now study really quite exotic animals and we're able to learn things about how their brains are structured and what that means for their experience of the environment. Because this is the first time that we've used it in, in an exotic species like a dolphin, it kind of creates possibilities for studying pretty much any other animal out there that we want to learn about how their minds work and how they create uh, perceptual experiences from their environment.